Welcome back to How to Cake It. Today is all about that cake. T-shirt reference. Today I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I make Yo's Ultimate Chocolate Cake. Now make sure you watch to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you something that anyone can get to make their cakes look spectacular. Are you ready to get started or what? If you want the full breakdown of ingredients, tools, and step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this cake, just head to my blog at howtocakeit.com or click the link in the description below. To begin making my chocolate cake, you will need a stand mixer fitted with a bowl and a paddle attachment. The first thing you need to do is place your butter and sugar into the bowl of your mixer. It's really important that your butter is room temperature for this recipe, as well as your eggs, because you don't want them to be too cold, causing your batter to curdle. Once you have your butter and sugar in the bowl, you wanna add the paddle attachment and set this on your mixer. First thing I need to do is crack some eggs. I can't even count how many eggs I've cracked in my baking career. When I used to work at a bakery, the eggs came in crates, so every single crate had 32 eggs per sheet. It was just eggs upon eggs upon eggs. Today, only eight. A lot of people ask what kind of flour I use. I use all-purpose flour. If it's not all-purpose, I will write that, but it's usually all-purpose flour. I'm gonna add my baking soda, my baking powder, and finally, my salt. Now I'm going to take all these dry ingredients and sift them into a larger bowl. Sifting flour is important because it just gets out any lumps in your flour, and it also allows some air into the flour. The final piece of this amazing chocolate cake puzzle is Dutch processed cocoa. Look how rich and dark that looks. And some hot water. I just boiled this water in a kettle and then poured it out to measure it. And now what I'm gonna do is pour this water into the Dutch processed cocoa and stir it gently till I have a nice dark chocolate liquid. I just use a whisk to mix it all together. A lot of you have asked me if I'm married and how I met Mr. Cake. And I'm gonna tell you my secret right now. See this cocoa mixture? Just dabble a little behind your ears. I did that on our first date and here I am. <laughs> All my ingredients are prepped, time to beat this batter up. I start by creaming my butter and sugar on medium high speed, but don't crank your mixer, that's very bad for the motor, so bring it up to stir, two, four, and then six, and cream your butter and sugar for about five to eight minutes till it's light and fluffy. My five minutes are up. My butter and sugar are looking nice and fluffy. I'm gonna scrape down the bowl. Make sure none of the butter is stuck to the sides or the paddle. Now I'm ready to start adding my eggs to this batter. I add them two at a time on the stir speed. About halfway through adding my eggs, I scrape down my bowl once again. When you add the eggs, you just wanna beat them and incorporate them until you don't see them anymore. You really don't want to over beat them into the batter. Whoops, three got in. Now all my eggs are nicely incorporated, but again, I'm going to scrape down the bowl just to make sure. Now it's time to turn this batter into chocolate cake batter. Your cocoa mixture should still be warm. If you've left it aside for too long, just pop it in the microwave to warm it back up. I'm gonna add my dry ingredients and my wet ingredients alternately. I'm gonna begin with dry and end with dry. And the reason you wanna do this is because if you add wet to this fatty mixture, it's kinda like adding oil to water and it will just slosh around and not mix really well. So you wanna add some flour so that all this gorgeous liquid has something to sink into. You always wanna add these ingredients at stir speed because they won't look that good on you. They'll look better in the bowl. I need to scrape down this batter one last time. Make sure to get all this flour, because this is a big portion of batter. And then, turn your mixer back on. It's very full, so I'm just gonna go one speed higher than stir for about 30 seconds. There you have it. It's Yo's Ultimate Chocolate Cake. Get everything off this paddle. It's very important. 
Today I'm making three different cakes decorated three different ways. How exciting. That's why I made an eight pound portion of my batter. You can head to hattiecake.com because I have a helpful chart which will tell you how much batter I put in every size cake pan so that you'll know what portion to make for yourself. I line my pans with parchment paper. I have six cake pans to fill. Four of them are six inches round and two of them are five inches round. Oh, this is eight pounds for real. I need to work out. I'm pathetic. I lift a lot of heavy cakes, but it's not helping me. Each of my six inch round pans has one and a half pounds of batter, and each one of my five pound pans will get one pound of batter. All my pans are filled, but if you have a little bit of extra batter, just distribute it evenly throughout your pans. These cakes need a little tender loving care before I put them in the oven. I'm gonna show you how to get your batter evenly distributed in your pans. Just use your rubber spatula to first spread your batter around. Just lightly spread it around the pan and make sure it's nice and flat on top. And then what I like to do is take a knife and run it through my batter. I just do like a crisscross motion. And the reason I'm doing this is to release air bubbles. They will rise in the oven, but I just want to help them out. I don't want any big air pockets in my cake once they're baked. And finally, it's time to make some noise. So just bang your pans on your surface and help those air bubbles get out. And make this face while you do it. A lot of you may be wondering how I open my oven when my hands are clearly filled with cake. Chet has many talents. I got this. Thank you, Chet. You're welcome. Yes, just hold them open. Thank you. Amazing. Pans of this size bake for about 30 to 50 minutes at 350 degrees, but time is just a guideline. It's important to know your oven. Every oven is different. So always test your cakes with a toothpick or a cake tester inserted in the middle, and when it comes out clean, they're done. My cakes are baked and fully cooled in their pans. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get them out. Just take a straight little palette knife and run it all along the inside of your pan between the cake and the pan and gently press along the edge of your pan as you go all the way around. Just turn your pan over and give it a shimmy. And there you go. Before I have fun icing and decorating my three cakes, I just need to level and cut these cakes in half. We're just gonna cut off the dome you see here and then slice them in half into two layers. If you wanna learn how I level cakes with just a knife and a ruler, I have a video tutorial just on that. Click the link in the description below and watch for yourself. Here's a recipe of my gorgeous Italian meringue buttercream. I'm gonna show you a simple way to turn this Italian meringue buttercream into chocolate buttercream. All you need to do is take some chocolate. This is about four ounces of dark 72% chocolate. Chop it as finely as you can. Melt it in the microwave in 20 second increments, stirring in between until it's fully melted with no lumps. Set it aside until it's cool. Keep stirring so it doesn't harden up on you until you have this lovely, rich chocolate. I'm only gonna be turning about a third of this buttercream into chocolate buttercream. So I have a new clean bowl. I'm gonna remove some of my buttercream and then I'm going to add my cool melted dark chocolate. I poured in about half of my chocolate and now I'm gonna stir it into my buttercream or fold it into my buttercream. You can make it as chocolatey as you like. If you do add too much chocolate though, you will change the consistency. So be careful of that and definitely make sure your chocolate is not hot. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this dark chocolate. I try and maintain, you know, being ladylike when I'm tasting my recipes for you guys. So I always do the like, delicious. My producer, <laughs> like wants me to do this. Mmm, oh yeah, ah, mmm. Is that real enough for you? 
Perfect. Just don't put that back in the bowl. I know that. <laughs> but now I can't waste this. I'll be right back. I've got all the tools I need to ice my three chocolate cakes, my Lazy Susan. I like to put down a non-slip mat. This is just shelf liner. Cake boards, my simple syrup in this snazzy bottle, and then I have a small offset spatula and a large icing spatula. For this cake, which I iced really roughly, we're going to completely cover the sides and the top with dried coconut chips. This is one of my favorite looks. Move your hand up, just release, let whatever sticks to the cake stick. I love how something so simple just pressed into a cake ends up looking so cool. Now, uh, just sort of dust away the excess coconut along the bottom of your board. Okay, and now we're gonna add coconut to the top of our cake. I like to just sort of sprinkle it on. I'm gonna move on to my chocolate cake now. For this chocolate cake, I'm kind of using the same technique, but doing something a little more party oriented. Again, I'm gonna put a cake pan under the cake. And now I have this sugar confetti, which is so cute and so fun and so colorful that I'm going to apply to my cake in the same manner as the coconut, but I'm only gonna take it a little bit, about an inch up from the bottom of the cake. So little handfuls. These suckers like to bounce. Okay. Ooh. Press in just slightly. You don't wanna wreck all the combing you did. And now once you're happy with the pattern around the bottom of your cake, just sort of whisk away the extra sugar confetti with your finger or your thumb, lightly. Okay, now I'll set this chocolate cake aside and move on to the final cake. For this last cake, I have some sugar pearls. I have some metallic black pearls that I'm gonna be using, as well as some metallic light blue pearls, and then some more classic pearls that are actually gumballs. And what I'm gonna do here, is throw, and then I'm gonna sweep my floor. But right now, I'm just throwing. So I'm gonna start with the black pearls. It's about as athletic as I get. Oh, oh I feel so free. All three of these cakes are ready for an amazing final touch that I can't wait to show you. I've been dying all episode. These are gorgeous cake toppers from Alexis Maddox Design. I am in love with these toppers. If you knew me, you'd know that I am passionate about design and fonts. And look at these, they're gorgeous. This one says, it's your birthday which makes me want to sing a 50 cent song, but I'll spare you. It's so beautiful, so bright. I would love this on my birthday cake. And this one is so pretty and so sleek. And as my friend Casper says, if you want something to look good, just put a bow on it. And that's what I'm gonna do. That's why I love these cake toppers. Anyone can get them, pop them on a cake, finish it off and wow their guests. If you guys wanna check them out, there's a link in the description below. They have a whole gorgeous selection of cake toppers. This one is my personal favorite. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because I'll be doing an exciting cake topper giveaway this week. I'm so happy that I shot this video today because it's actually my friend Derek Friday's birthday. Casper's on his way bringing him over to surprise him. So we're gonna eat all these cakes and celebrate. But first I have to taste test one and make sure it's just right for my friend because that's the kind of caring friend I am. I love coconut, and I love chocolate, and I love buttercream. 
If you like what you saw today, please subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your mother. Leave a comment. Tell everybody. <laughs> tell your mother is so right. <laughs> tell your mother. You should tell your mother everything. My son is going to tell me everything. <laughs> oh, the dream. I gotta go. I gotta. Jocelyn, are you gonna help me? We have to go. Bye, chat. <laughs>